Dave Barber and I'm the Feet Farm Manager. Today we're going to be going through and building a sheep shelter. You can probably see in the background I already have two frames. So we'll be going through and putting a third one together. And we'll discuss some of the construction techniques used and our design considerations. We did not have actual plans for this one. We just took and based it on the space needed for the animals. Okay, so for our next little piece, we're going to talk about some of the basic tools that we use for building our shelters and a little bit of safety considerations as you're out building different things. So everything you see here is lumber. It's pretty much everything the corrugated tin. It's pretty much everything that we used in the construction of the shelters. So skill saw, we use a battery operated skill saw just because where we was at we didn't feel like running two extension cords out to use our actual electric skill saw. We've got an impact driver for putting in screws. We've got a drill for drilling pilot holes. We have a level for making sure our, our walls are level. Tape measure, very important piece of equipment out here and probably the one that'll either make you or break you and cause you more grief than you care to like because you didn't double check your measurements. Um, a hammer, otherwise known as a persuader. Just as you're building the wall segments and you're putting the interior support beams in, if uh, your cuts are a little snug, sometimes you need a little assistance in getting those put into place. Pencil for marking your lines. A square, which is the one we have. Also, if for some reason you need to do angles, you can do your angle measurements so that when you do your cuts, you're not having to play any mini money guess or eyeball it. Try to get your angles in right. And then for putting up the siding, since there's only two of us and we only have two hands each, and we're dealing with eight foot sheets of corrugated tin, we use clamps to help hold up the tin while we got everything screwed into place. Um, Clamps are good for a lot of things, though. You can help hold boards together, whatever. Uh, they're always good to have handy. Uh, whenever you're using your power tools, please be mindful. I have a couple of items of safety gear shown over here in the top right. A pair of gloves. Whenever you're handling the lumber, you may or may not want to use them. Uh, I like using them just because it gives me a little more, more grip and helps protect me from splinters. Uh, Whenever you're cutting, though, especially with the skill saw, you do not want to wear the gloves. And that's so that you don't accidentally get the glove caught up in the saw blade. Uh, you do want to make sure you're wearing some kind of safety glasses rated with the Z87 rating to protect your eyes, especially if you're cutting. So that way you don't get sawdust blown up into them. Really important if you're doing working with metal. Ideally, you want to wear goggles for that so you don't get any metal shavings in. So, protective gear. Um, if the tool that you're using in your project, such is something, say, like a generator that creates a lot of noise, a lot of steady noise, and you're going to be using it for a very prolonged period of time, you probably want to want to consider using earplugs. Um, so, really, it's a matter of taking a look at the tool you're using and wearing the right protective equipment to use that tool. And the other thing that I've got in here is the screws we used. Um, most of it was done with two and a half screws. You could do it with three inch screws based on the way the boards are laying in. You won't want to go too much shorter than this for doing your basic um, screwing your two by fours together just because then you start losing some of your strength and holding the lumber together if you go too much shorter. If you do a one by on the two, the two by then yeah you'd probably go down to a two inch but again for what we're using everything was two by four construction throughout so we use two and a half and three inch screws on this primarily two and a half inch screws. Uh, three inch we use for towing in on the roof to secure it to the main frame of the building. 
The other thing up here, which I have laying on top of the bucket, these are known as sheeter screws. So for corrugated tin, uh, you don't want to use the roofing nails just because they're not really designed for that. The sheeter, sheeter screws are meant for corrugated tin. And you see it's got a screw here. You see a little washer and it's got a rubber grommet underneath it. And then you got a hex head here for it. What this does is it screws down and that rubber grommet will squish down so that it basically forms a water seal. That way you're not getting leaks in through where you put your screw through the corrugated tent. Um, construction screws, there's other types of screws out there. And you could probably use them if you wanted to. You could use nails if you really wanted to, but because we did this modular so we could take it apart later, we use screws. Uh, we like construction screws because they have the hex head, star head, sorry, they have the star head on them so that as you're screwing with your impact hammer, you're less likely to strip out the head of the screw versus if you're using a regular Phillips head screw. Um, yes, nails could have been used. Again, because we're doing a modular concept for this, so we could take this apart later. We didn't. Um, it just makes it, like I said, using the screw, it makes it easier. So if you need to tear it apart and move it, or if you need to make some adjustments for something, you can go back in, remove the screws, take apart what you need to take apart, make your adjustments or whatever. A lot easier than having to deal with nails, especially if the nails have been in the lumber for a while. It's really difficult to take them apart. Um, when we were helping our friend take down the horse shelters, four of them were done with screws, so it made it pretty easy, quick work to take those apart. The last one, somebody got nail happy. <laughs> and that took us probably about two days to get that and it was the smallest of the structures and it took us about two days to get that thing torn down because of the nails because you try to try and get in there get in under the nail head pull it out enough so you can get the claw under it from the hammer so you can pull the nails so much prefer putting stuff together using screws for this type of item um just makes life a lot easier